We love gemstones. I mean, that's why we do this every day, right? Whether it's cracking open some geodes or unboxing breathtaking specimens, we just can't get enough of them. If you're as big a fan as we are, you've probably looked at a beautiful gemstone or a specimen and thought to yourself, how exactly did this gem go from buried in the earth to into my hands? Today, we're gonna take you through the journey that is the life of a gem. It's time for some farm to table gemstone style. For starters, we gotta go where the gemstones are. As we've talked about in our videos, there are gemstones of all kinds all over the world. Gems are usually mined on a small scale, or they're found as a byproduct of bigger mineral mining operations like open pit mining or underground mining. But did you know that the mining processes for colored gems and diamonds are completely different? For colored gemstones, occurrences are unpredictable, so it can be difficult for miners to guess how much gem material they will get from any given deposit. Plus, the small size of these deposits and the often inhospitable terrain in which they occur make large-scale mining financially risky and probably not worth it. Because of this, a lot of colored gem deposits are mined by small groups of people using simple mining techniques. Sometimes miners dig open pits or vertical shafts with tunnels to reach the gems way below the surface. Simple tools like picks, drills, and even explosives are used to separate gems from their parent rock. If you've got just a shovel, don't worry. Many gem and mineral types are so common and easy to find that they may just be right in your backyard. No dynamite needed. Make sure to check out our video on gems you can find right at home. Diamond mining takes a different approach to the process though, because precision isn't as important. For colored gems, you want to ensure that you keep the gems quality and integrity. With diamonds, on the other hand, any that you find are useful, regardless of size or quality, thanks to its myriad industrial applications like in computers, reinforcing drills, cutting tools, and abrasives. Turns out the world's hardest natural material is pretty useful. Because of the value of gem quality diamonds and the usefulness of the uglier stuff, it's extracted on a much larger scale than colored gems. Open pits are a common practice for diamond mining, but you'll also see block caving to extract the diamonds. Block caving is when you find a massive ore body underground and you start to hollow it out, creating an artificial cavern that slowly starts to collapse under its own weight. Think of it as pit mining, but occurring entirely underground. The majority of these gem materials, both diamonds and colored gems alike, get sent to cutters and treaters, often traveling to opposite corners of the globe. For example, a large part of corundum is mined in Africa and Madagascar, and it's often sold to cutters 4,000 miles away in Thailand. There are prominent diamond cutting centers in India, Belgium, Israel, and the US, but the largest producers of these stones are Russia at about 40 million carats a year and Botswana producing 20 million carats. For colored stones, the biggest regions for cutting centers are found in India and in the Far East. The next step is for cutters to sell directly to jewelry manufacturers, cut dealers, or directly to wholesalers. The next round of selling goes to the hands of retailers, which is where you, the customer, come in. Whether it's through brick and mortar stores, TV, or online, today there are more ways than ever to shop and find gemstones and mineral specimens from all around the world. You could buy a ruby that was mined in India, cut in Thailand, and sold in your local shop. You may think that we're at the end of the road, but we're not done yet. Even after being sold brand new, a ring or specimen can be sold again and again and again. Auctions, conventions, pawn shops, and online stores are all great places to find gems, jewelry, and specimens writing the next chapter in their journey. Sometimes collections will be passed down from generation to generation, traded between collectors, or they'll end up in museums for the whole public to appreciate. All these stages in the life of a gem are called its provenance, and the more interesting the story, the more valuable the item. Needless to say, you never know exactly where a gem will find its next home. So that's all we have time for today. It's really amazing to consider the life of a gem before it got to your hands and where it could end up after it leaves them. Which of your gemstones do you think has the most interesting history? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. See ya.